Thank you for joining to our session. In this session, we'd like to talk about the update on AGL production readiness and what the support in AGL. This presentation has these seven sections. I'll start with the background and Toyota's activity in AGL. And I'll talk about production readiness, that is the activity to fill the gap between current AGL and IBI products in the market. Then I'll introduce the specification for production readiness. After that, I'll hand over to Chris and he will present the flutter in AGL with some demo videos. And finally, I wrap up our presentation with the future plan and the conclusion. Before starting the content, uh, please let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Mitsuo Date. I'm software engineer in Toyota. Currently, I'm in charge of developing IBI system and AGL in Toyota. And also I'm reading IBI EG, that is a regular meeting for IBI in AGL community. Then let's get started. As the background of production readiness activity, I'd like to talk about how Toyota have been working with AGL. From the early days of AGL, Toyota have been contributing to AGL community. Uh, to improve the presence of AGL, we have been developed and presented POCs and demos in ALS or CES. The content is, for example, window manager and home screen. We also have contributed to the specification for AGL UCB. And Toyota announced that our product is based on the same spec. In recent years, we are more focusing on how we can adapt AGL to our products. We'd like to present two related topics today. One is the production readiness activity and the specification document for that. The other topic is supporting flutter in AGL as a new option of HMI framework for AGL. Main purpose of Flutter support is to attract more developers, but from production readiness perspective, we are trying to support use cases that is required for automotive products through the Flutter contribution. For the first topic, I'd like to start with the motivation of production readiness activity. Thanks to the contribution from many companies and community members, AGL membership has grown to more than 140 companies now. However, when we look at the status of product adoption by OEMs, only a few cases are publicly announced. As far as we know, there are three announcements from OEMs. One of them is Toyota's announcement in 2017. So we think AGL membership is growing, but the adoption to actual product is still low. Then we started production readiness activity to fill the gap between AGL UCB and OEM products. As the first step, uh, we have created production readiness profile last year. AGL has code first culture and AGL community usually discussed based on the actual source code. Then we wanted to disclose our product source code. However, because actual products are not fully compatible with IBI profile, uh, that is current UCB, uh, we need a lot of refactoring and modification to be merged with IBI profile. But before paying many costs for refactoring and having long and deep discussions, we needed to make them available as AGL image. Then we have created production readiness profile. Uh, this is a platform where source codes used for actual products can be easily disclosed. 
and we hope this profile can be used as product level references for IBI. After the discussion within the community, uh, selected source code and requirements from production readiness profile uh, will be merged into IBI profile. And we have released the first version of the production readiness profile last year in KK release. It included base system from Toyota and RBA from Denso. Production readiness is currently maintained under Meta AGL level. We continued to work on this activity. This year, we focused on specification documents for production readiness and flutter support. Internally, we also plan to update base system and also plan to disclose more functional module to production readiness profile in the future. Today, I'd like to briefly introduce production readiness specification. First of all, why do we need a spec? Although AGL has code first culture and we can discuss based on source code, defining product requirement and use cases for IBI products are quite important because source code usually doesn't tell us high level requirements or use cases. In addition to that, we wanted to discuss production requirements and use cases in AGL community. By talking this topic with other OEMs, tier ones, and AGL community members, we hope we can define common requirements for modern IBI products. And although AGL UCB have their own specification, that is not updated since 2015, so we needed to update it anyway. And when creating this spec, uh, we described the requirements and the use cases implemented in production readiness profile. That means these requirements and use cases are based on actual products. And Toyota have created the draft version of this spec, and that was reviewed by other AGL members, including OEMs. For this year, we have released the version 1.0 that covers the functionality of base systems. Main contents of production readiness spec 1.0 are use cases the requirements, and the corresponding implementation in base system. From production readiness profile, we describe the eight topics as following. One thing we have paid attention to when creating this spec is the connection between use cases or requirements and actual implementation. This page shows an example of power state management. This is a feature to notify various power state transitions to other services. One of the related use cases on this topic is delayed ending. That is, when the driver arrives at the destination, the driver might want to continue the hands-free call even after ACC off. To enable this delayed ending use cases, power state management is required and some functional requirements needed to be satisfied. One is, for example, receiving state transition requests from hardware and also need to notify the power state change request to each services. And based on the implementation of the power state management module, and power state change signal from hardware can be efficiently abstracted and delivered to services. The example of implementation for this topic is also available in production readiness profile. 
and there's the power services. The source code is shown like this. We have just released the version 1.0. And this version only contains eight features implemented in base system. That is not covered every features needed for IBI and not the replacement of AGL spec version 1.0 yet. As a future plan of this activity, we plan to contribute more source code from actual products to production readiness profile. And then we will update the spec for production readiness accordingly to make source code and the spec consistent. Then I'd like to pass the button to Chris and he will present Flutter in AGL. My name is Christopher Casey and I'll be speaking today about Flutter. Specifically, how we're using Flutter at Toyota and how we're starting to integrate Flutter into automotive grade Linux. After going through a few slides, I'll also give a brief demo showing a few Flutter sample apps running on AGL as well as the surrounding tools and workflow. Before that, just a little bit of background on myself. I've been developing customer-facing apps for a number of years, but most recently I've been focusing on how we use Flutter in the next generation of Toyota vehicles. To start with, what's Flutter and why are we using it? In a nutshell, Flutter is a cross-platform UI framework produced by Google and focused intensely on values related to developer productivity. Using Flutter, it should be possible for a developer to create a high-performance, cross-platform, touchscreen-focused app that's mostly up to the standards that a user would expect from a typical smartphone app. In addition, Flutter has a great developer ecosystem. There's many packages published on pub.dev. Google has invested heavily in this, and it's pretty rare that a developer needs to reinvent the wheel with the great ecosystem that's been produced. And finally, Flutter has really great performance. It includes ahead of time compilation and for the most part, comes pretty close to native performance in most scenarios. Combining all these advantages, we expect that Flutter may attract a fair amount of attention to automotive grade Linux. At Toyota, we've specifically focused on a few different pillars. The first pillar is enabling Flutter in automotive grade Linux. Of course, Flutter supports a number of platforms given the standard open source configuration. These include iOS and Android. However, some additional work is required to enable a new platform on Flutter. And we focused on that here at Toyota. The second area that we focused on is enabling seamless mixed 2D and 3D content within a Flutter app. We expect that there's going to be a big demand for high quality integrated content in the future. We noticed there's a bit of a gap in the tooling here today, and we focused on fixing that, which we'll be able to demonstrate here in a few minutes. Flutter also does a really great job of enabling us to do this by providing what they call the Embedder API. At Toyota, we've developed a custom embedder, which integrates the open source ecosystem into automotive grade Linux. But without Flutter's great embedder API, this would not have been possible. And for the most part, our embedder is a fairly small and lightweight piece of software. In fact, our embedder really only replaces the very bottom layer of the open source stack. The middle layer, including the engine, and the top layer, including the Dart framework, can be used in line with the open source published software without modification. Related to our second pillar of integrating 2D and 3D content within Flutter, we've enabled the usage of the standard Flutter texture widget class. This can be placed anywhere within the widget hierarchy and when running on an automotive grade Linux environment, we can substitute that widget for a fully custom three-dimensional scene. The scene can be rendered using whatever technology is needed, 
and can be bound to touch events and other control planes using gesture detectors and platform channels. Following this, I'll give a brief demonstration that shows concretely what I've been talking about so far. The first portion of this demo will demonstrate a Hello World Flutter application being created using the standard open source Flutter create command and running end to end on an AGL emulator. The second portion of the demo will focus on a slightly more advanced application, including 3D contents. Essentially what will happen in this demo is local Flutter tools installed on a developer machine will communicate with QMU on an emulated touchscreen device. This is a pretty standard workflow that anyone who's used an Android emulator should be familiar with, and it can be mostly achieved using the open source Flutter tooling with minimal or no modification. So that being said, let's get straight to the demo. To start with, we'll demonstrate an example app created using the standard open source Flutter create command and running on the AGL emulator. You'll notice that as soon as we issue the Flutter create command, Flutter begins to generate a standard example app. At the same time, in the top right, we're starting to boot the AGL emulator. You can see that once the emulator is booted, we can very quickly run the build and run script that we've defined down in the bottom. This script should simply copy the asset bundle from the Flutter application to the virtualized environment and start to run the application. This happens pretty quickly, and as soon as we copy the asset bundle over and issue the run command, we should see the standard Flutter counter example app appear. This application includes a number and a button that can be used to increment the number. The next command we'll issue is flutter attach. This attaches the application running in the virtualized environment to the host tools over a debug protocol. This debug protocol includes all of the standard nice things for developers, such as hot reload, hot restart, setting breakpoints, and observing logs. Once the debugger is attached, you'll see that we can open the main.dart file for the Flutter app that was generated by the open source Flutter tooling. And we'll go ahead and change some text on the screen. Once we change this text, you'll see that we're going to issue the hot restart command. This tells Flutter to update the text that's on the screen in the running application. You can see this was very fast. It took less than a second. This is because the Flutter open source tools generate incremental rebuilds and send this over the debugger protocol, which is very efficient. The next command that we're going to issue is a hot restart. In some cases, changes are so complex that we can't actually preserve our application state and we have to do a complete reset. When we do this, you'll notice that the counter changes back from eight to zero, indicating that the application state has totally reset. There are many other commands available over the Flutter debugging protocols, and this is just a very simple example, but it shows how quickly you can get up and running with the open source Flutter tools and with the open source AGL tools, and an application developer can quickly combine this to do more powerful things, which we'll show next. In this next slightly more complex demo, we'll show a mock infotainment app developed using Flutter. This app includes a number of complex vector animations, as well as integrated 3D content. When we tap the button in the top right corner, you'll notice that the graph toggle state with nice performance, even achieved under emulation. Next, we'll show a nice little media player animation. Finally, we'll open the user profile menu to show another type of animated content. Last, when we scroll to the bottom of the demo app, you'll notice placeholder or empty content. In this case, we're going to insert a 3D scene using a hot reload. As soon as we issue the hot reload, you're going to notice 3D content appear within the Flutter widget hierarchy. 
This is a scene that's been rendered dynamically using OpenGL. This demonstrates the ability of the Toyota Embedder to include mixed 2D and 3D content. That's the end of our presentation and demonstrations today, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to wrap up our presentation with our future plans. We plan to continue the contribution to production readiness. Flutter continue to be our main focus for some more months, but we also plan to upgrade base systems and plan to contribute more features. This is our current roadmap, but we hope more OEMs or tier ones contribute to production readiness. To summarize our presentation today, Toyota have been contributing to AGL community. We have released the first version of specification for production readiness this year that defines requirement and use cases for actual IVI products. We are also trying to support Flutter in AGL. Toyota disclosed a customer embedder for AGL and Flutter application development in AGL is almost ready. We have enabled to use 3D images in Flutter apps for IVI use cases. We will continue the contribution to AGL. More features to production readiness profile is planned and we will update the specification accordingly and we will complete the initial factor support in AGL. Thank you for listening to our presentation.